evening. Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Well, this is just a little update on the um, Daniel Kinahan downfall um, because there's been quite a significant update. Well, I think it is anyway. Um, today it was announced that the UK authorities have um, extradited, sorry, the Irish authorities have extradited um, a man to Dublin Okay, who was wanted, um, a man called Michael Carroll, 42. I'll read you the article. Man charged over two attempted murders in Dublin. Right, updated Thursday, 28th of April, 2022 at 6.30, right? And it's now 10 to 8. A Dublin man has been remanded in custody after Gardy charged him with, a, with the attempted murders of two men in the capital. Michael Carroll, 42, of Bride Street, Dublin 8, is accused of trying to murder Edward Staunton and the late John Hutch, a brother of Jerry the Monk Hutch, in shootings in 2016 and the following year. He was extradited from the UK today and was arrested after his flight landed at Casement Aerodrome in Baldonnell, <coughs> County Dublin. Gardy um, brought him to Shaw Street Station where he was charged ahead of his appearance before Judge Brian Smith during the late sitting of the Dublin District Court. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, right. Detective Gardy, Sheila Sheehan, told the court Mr Carroll had nothing to say in reply to three charges. He is accused of two counts of attempted murder of Edward Staunton, 30, on the night of 26th of March 2017 at James Joyce Street, Dublin 1, and P. And P. Dar Kearney House, Railway Street, Dublin 1. Mr. Staunton suffered serious injuries during a hit and run, followed by a shooting a short time later. Fuck me, right? He tried to run him over, right? And then, and then tried to shoot him. And both failed. The alleged attempt on the life of John Hutch, 63, who has since passed away, was during a shootout at his Drummerley Avenue home on the North Circular Road, D7, on the 2nd of September 2016. The District Court does not have the jurisdiction to consider a bail application in an attempted murder case, which requires an application to the High Court. The Director of Public Prosecutions has directed trial on indictment. Prosecutors now have to complete a book of evidence before he can be returned for trial to the Central Criminal Court. Justice Smith re um, remanded Mr Carroll in custody to appear at Cloverhill District Court on the 5th of May. Right, well, um, there's a, a man on Twitter, right? Um, um, who is it? His name's... Um, uh, John Doyle, right? He's he's right up on all this carry on, right? And he, and and what he's done is he's um, he's sent up some articles, right? Um, which show uh, um, which show that there is a connection between the Kinnahans, right? Well, obviously, right? It was it was when they had all that fighting stuff. Well, you got to remember, right? I've only just come in on the Kinnahans thing, right? Not long ago, right? A few weeks ago, right? A couple of months, you know, or this year. Okay, because I mean, I was never really interested. I'm still not interested in the drug game, right? It's nothing to do with me, right? I don't care, right? Unless there's a stolen art angle. And my angle was with Raphael Imperiali, who bought the two stolen Van Goghs off of Octave Durham and Hank Beslin, who stole them in 2002 from the Van Gogh Museum in uh, the Netherlands. Okay, and, and so that's how there's ever been, you know, uh, with regards to Super Cartel in Dubai. And then all of a sudden, right, you've got the Brighton boys who can't keep their mouth shut. And I'm included. Yeah, I can't keep my mouth shut, right? But it's quite good because I now do the rabbit in every day. Right, you've got the Brighton boys, right? You've got Joey Sanson, right? You've got Mark Baker, Julian Ponder, Terry Sanson Jr., Jock McCracken, Brian Groves, Danny King, Keith Ingram, right? Uncle Tom Cobbley and all, right? All of them, right, now think... Because the Kinahan cartel is like being dismantled, right? They can slip in, right, and, and take the slice of the action, right? And Mark Baker's got the uh, Russian connections with Semyon Semi Mogilevich. And that's the only reason, right, that I'm even looking at all this sort of um, drug stuff. Do you know what I mean, right? Um, but anyway, right, this Michael Carroll, he's now facing two attempted murders, 
right? Um, as the shooter on those two, um, uh, on them three, on them attempts, right? On them two people, right? One of them was um, the brother of Jerry the Monk Hutch, right? Um, and so, now, if he's facing all that time, right, if he's got um, any evidence on the Kinnahans, right, or could say that they they paid him, you know, he was, uh, they uh, they took out the contract and he took the contract to do it, right? But that will be a nail in the coffin, right, of the Kinnahans, even though it might be removed. I mean, he's primed now for a deal, this Carroll bloke, right? Or if he don't, he's going to get a long time in jail. But you can see, right, every day there's something happening every single day, right? And it's like coming to a crescendo. And as I, you know, and as I said, the Plastic Paddy last night, right, we did another live stream, right, Gangster Wednesday with, with Plastic Paddy, right? He was kind enough to invite me back um, for the second time last night. We did a live stream, right? And he said he wants me on, on again next Wednesday. That's nice, isn't it, of him, right? So, and we were talking about this. Right, um, and, and I said, right, I still maintain that when the news hits, when it hits the media, hits the news, breaking news, right, that Daniel Kinnahan, Christy Kinnahan and Christopher Kinnahan, you know, they've been arrested, right, um, the authorities will say, we arrested them then, and it'll be a few days ago or a week ago, right, I don't think they're going to do it live, and I don't think they're going to, you know, I don't think they'll let the, the news leak out really quickly, because I think, they want to, well, they, you know, I know they want to get it all done in one hit. They don't want to arrest them and have them sitting in Dubai for six months fighting extradition, right, like Raphael Imperiali, right? They want to arrest them, have all the paperwork, the um, T's crossed, the I's dotted, right, and so they can arrest them and whisk, whisk them out of the country, right, straight away, whether that's through a military plane, right, to America, Right, or whether it's on under a Dutch warrant to start with and then starts a ball rolling, gets them to Amsterdam or gets them to Shipbow Airport in the Netherlands, right, and then the Irish might want to have a go and so he might go to Dublin and then ultimately to the United States. Okay, now, you know, and I think that's you know, what they're going to do and that's why I said the weekend because what they'll want to do, they'll want to do a Freddie Foreman 1990. They just want to arrest him and get him out of the country right before his um, lawyers have a chance to do anything. You know, and that's why I said that they, that they should hand themselves in. Now, if they do that, I think when we get the news of what has actually happened, right, is we're going to be looking at in the rearview mirror. You know, it's going to be, blimey, they were arrested then, were they? And they kept it really quiet. Or they might just appear in jumpsuits at Guantanamo Bay, right, or just a pit, or the news comes out that they're in the United States. Right, but you see they're dismantling it, right? It's all coming on top, right, all over. Right, all over the whole world, right? I can't think of a time when there's been such a big cluster of drug busts, right, arrests of um, major players, right, and then coming out in public and saying that Daniel Kinahan's public enemy number one and Christie. And also last night, right, I was um, speculating, right, that I think maybe, you know, like in the game of chess, right, you protect the king, don't you, right? So. Who's the king in this instance, right? It'll be Christy Kinnahan, won't it? So don't be surprised to hear that he's already fled the country out in Dubai weeks ago. Okay, he, maybe even Christopher. And Daniel has just made a, a point of sticking his photographs up on Instagram with Martin Ford, right, and other people, right, just so that he's the last man standing. He's going to have to take it on the chin. And them, and them two have already gone. Right, so there's so many different permutations about what's going on, right? But it's choreography, and and it and it's all bit. And I think when, when it comes out, you'll be out, we'll, we'll all be out to join the dots, right? And I think what they'll do is, um, you know, I really don't think it's going to be just an, a conventional. Um, we go there, we arrest him. The cameras are all out waiting. I might be wrong, you know. I think that they're going to do it. Try and keep it as quiet as possible. Get them out of Dubai, right? Um, at the United Arab Emirates. Okay, and then announce it. But we'll see what happens, right? But this is quite a major development today, right? You've got the shooter on two attempted murders, okay, um, has been extradited from the UK to Dublin, right? And he's now going to be charged with that. And there's obviously links. And apparently, right, this Michael Carroll, right, um, and, you know, act it to John Doyle again, he's got um, um, an article from many years ago, right? And it said this Michael Carroll come from the Oliver Bond uh, flat com uh, com complex. Oliver Bond flat complex. 
Now that is where the Kenahans, right, started out, you know, early doors, early years, right? So there's, a, you know, as, and as I wrote on um, Twitter, it's all so incestuous, right? And and um, the thing is, right, the only problem that they've got, right, is that really there's not a lot of difference with the street soldiers, right, and then and them at the top in Dubai. Because as we found out, right, and, and, and uh, Plastic Paddy's done a lot of work on this with all the connections, but they've left a, um, a trail of breadcrumbs. You know, all these different companies, all, all at the same address, and it's bringing in everyone. Right, and behind the scenes, right, we don't know exactly what's going down, right, and I think that we're going to be told um, um, about the arrests and that of the Kinnahans in past tense. You know, so we'll see how it turns out, right? But I thought that was quite an important update, right, um, on today, uh, just to sort of get it out there. Um, and then another thing, right? Now, back to me old stolen art thing, right? You know me, I like the old stolen art, don't I? Now, um, the FBI have announced, right, that they that they raided um, Oleg Deripaska, the um, billionaire oligarch, gangster, Russian, they raided his properties last October in um, um, Washington, D.C. And they announced the other day, or they announced yesterday or today, right, that uh, uh, part of the property that was stolen, right, was a painting by Diego R uh, Rivera, right? A lovely painting, worth a lot of money. And I made the point on um, Twitter, right, that they should, right, have se seized all these Petit Philippe watches and run the numbers because it would have come back that some of them have been stolen by the Pink Panthers, because I wrote about this back in 2013. Okay, because what happened, right? You'll like this one. Should we sit down and we'll have a little chat, fireside chat? Now, as we know, if you go back and look, right, the Pink Panthers, right, they um, they formed, right, um, um, at the end of the Balkans War, and most of them were Serbian, but some Croatians, Montenegro, right, and the Balkans, right, the Balkan bandits they started off as, and then they were um, dubbed the Pink Panthers because one of them got caught in London with a single big um, um, diamond in a um, jar of face cream, a bit like the film Pink Panthers. So that's how they got their name. And you can Google them, right? And you can see that they've carried out about 200 um, high-value jewel heists all over Europe, UK, France, Dubai. Yeah, they've done one in Dubai with the LD screeching and all that game, right? Um, um, Japan, uh, the United States, right? They, they've done them everywhere, the Pink Panthers. Um, and they're all ex soldiers, right? Um, all ex soldiers um, that served in the Balkans War. So every, every um, raid on the jewellers' shops, right, are all done to military precision and done in, out, two minutes, you know what I mean, with the stopwatch, right? And they're very ingenious, right? Because um, um, one day, right, they, they, there was a bench, right, sitting opposite the shop they were going to raid, so they didn't want uh, anyone sitting on there, right, to witness it. So what they done is they got one of their uh, one of their operatives, um, and he painted the um, uh, the bench, so it, and put a sign on it, wet paint, right, so no one would sit on it, because they couldn't, and so that, so there wouldn't be no witnesses, and they were in bump and out. Well, the story, this is what happens, right? This is back in 2008, 2009, right? Well, Oleg Deripaska, okay, um, teams up with Nathaniel Rothschild, Nat Rothschild, okay, right? And they sail to Montenegro, right, on his yacht, the $60 million yacht, Queen K. And they park it up and moor it up, okay? And on board is, is a guest, Lord Peter Mandelson and his Brazilian partner, Right, well, they get off the boat and then they go into Montenegro, right, and, and um, they go to a nightclub, right, where they meet, right, one of the Pink Panthers, right, um, Dragon Mikic, I think it was, right, um, and he says, do you want to buy some watches, you know, Petit Philippe watches and diamonds and all that, right, well, Oleg Deripaska being a street kid, right, he can't, you know, you know he sees a bargain, right, he has a deal. So he buys some Petit Philippe watches, some jewellery and other bits and pieces, right? And they go back to the Queen K boat and they get on the boat, okay? And then Oleg Deripaska gives one of the Petit Philippe watches to Lord Peter Mandelson, okay, right? Now, people know him in the UK, right, as the um, Prince of Darkness, right? He's one of them, um, you know, he's slippery, a bit like Roger Stone in the, U uh, in the US, Right, um, you know, a mover and shaker, Lord Peter Mandelson, right? He was a commissioner 
at the European Union, right, and he gave um, the aluminium industry, he, he brought in new rules which helped Oleg Deripaska and he earned $400 million in one year, right, he um, dropped some regulations so Oleg Deripaska could start selling a lot of aluminium, right, because he does all that, you know, um, uh, smelting stuff, you know, all them steel plants and that, right, and it was the aluminium. Because that's how Deripaska got his money, right, through the aluminium wars in the 90s in um, in Russia, right, um, Soviet Union, when it all fell apart. Well, so anyway, so um, Oleg Deripaska, they're on the boat, right, Nat Nathaniel Rothschild, right, um, uh, George Osborne, right, I think the, the ex-chancellor, right, he might have been there, I'm not sure if he was, right, but anyway, Peter Mandelson, his Brazilian partner, um... Nat, Nat Rothschild and Oleg Deripaska. So anyway, he gives Peter, Lord Peter Mandelson a Petit Philippe watch, right? So then they finished their trip, and the reason that they were in Montenegro, right, is because they, they were investing $500 million, right, in a new marina, and it's all built and lovely now, right, in Montenegro, okay? And it was with him, Monk, Peter Monk, another one. I think he's Canadian, Canadian billionaire, right? Anyway. Right, and it was and it was a project that they were doing, and while they were there um, um, overseeing the project, right on a visit, they went to the nightclub, met the um, Pink Panthers, Dragon Mikic, Mikic, right, I think it was. He was on the run. He's got, I've got a good story about him, right. Anyway, and and um, Oleg Deripaska's bought some jewellery and some Petit Philippe watches, and as I say, he gives one to Lord Peter Mandelson. So anyway, Lord Peter Mandelson goes back to Vienna, right. Um, because he's a commissioner in the European Union, right? And a short time later, or some time later, the um, Petit Philippe watch goes wrong and it stops working. So Lord Peter Mandelson, right, sends his Brazilian partner down to the Petit Philippe um, watchmakers, right, their shop in Vienna, right, and says, um, you know, can you repair this or something like that? It's not working, right? And so they send it to Switzerland to Petit Philippe. And then what they do is they run the serial number on the watch and it comes up, right, that it was stolen by the Pink Panthers in an armed raid in the south of France, right, or wherever it was, right? An armed raid from the Pink Panthers. Well, you can imagine now, oh, my God, the balloon's going to go up. So what happens, right, is, is um, Petit Philippe hold on to the watch in Switzerland and then there's a cop, right, Jan Glassy, right, he was investigating the Pink Panthers. So anyway, he goes back to see to speak to Peter, well, Peter Mandelson then gets on the phone, right, to Oleg Deripaska, right, and says, Oleg, listen, um, I've got a, I've got a bit a bit of a problem, right, that, that Petit Philippe watch that you um, gave me went wrong, and now they're, um, I've sent it to be repaired at Petit Philippe in Switzerland, and now they're telling me it's come from a robbery, armed robbery from the Pink Panthers, so then Oleg Deripaska dispatches the top lawyers in Vienna to represent Peter Mandelson, right? And Jan Glassy goes to um, Vienna, right? And it's all smoothed out behind the scenes. I didn't know and all that. No further action, covered right up. The watch then obviously goes back to where it should do, okay? And it was all covered up. Right, well, also, Oleg Deripaska has given Putin some of the, uh, of the Petit Philippe watches, and he got a taste of it, right? He liked it. He, liked it. he was getting all this jewellery that was, like, say, $2 million for, like, $200,000. And I know he's a billionaire, right, but they can't resist the bargain. And he bought loads of parcels of the Pink Panthers jewellery over the years, and he gave some of it to the ex-mayor of Moscow, and he was captured with some of the jewellery because one of his girlfriends had a, a diamond necklace on, right, that was spotted in a photograph. The ex-mayor of um, Yuri, someone, the ex-mayor of Moscow. Putin has got a personal collection of Petit Philippe watches, right, and he's also got a secret collection of stolen Petit Philippe watches. All the rare ones, right, the tour billion movements and all that game. Some of them cost over a million dollars, two million dollars. Right, night and day, Petit Philippe watch, right? Okay, so, oh, right, so you see that they're all gangsters, right? And it don't matter, they've got the keys to the kingdom, right? But but they can't get away from that, I want a bargain, right? So that was Oleg Deripaska. Okay, now I'm sure that people know, right? And also, right, Putin, right, listen, don't think, forget, think Putin's out of it, right? 
there was a geezer called Robert Kraft, right, who went on a delegation to Russia to meet Putin, right, and he and he showed Putin his Super Bowl ring, right, this man called Robert Kraft, and, and he took it off and showed it to Putin, and Putin put, put it on his hand, right, and he didn't give it back, right, he stole it, right, honestly, truthfully, right, well, the press got to hear about it, and there was a story, you can go and look it up, Robert Kraft, Super Bowl ring, right, uh, Vladimir Putin steals it, right? So then what happens, right, is it gets in the papers and then Vladimir Putin said, oh, I thought he was giving it to me as a gift. I suppose like Oleg Deripaska was giving him the Pink Panther stolen Petit Philippe watches. Well, there was a new ha and it caused a bit of a diplomatic incident, right? Well, it was resolved in the end, I think, right? Because, um, um, I, you know, I can't remember the, um, the final thing, right? But I think Putin still got it, right? He might have given it back. But I think he's still got it, and Robert Kraft had another one made or something, right? Well, it shows they're thieves, you know what I mean? You know, Putin might be worth 200 billion or whatever he's worth, it don't matter, right? But you know what I mean? Right, they, you know, they've got, they've got um, sticky fingers, didn't they, right? They can't keep the reins at the cookie jar, right? Putin could order every petite Philippe, right, on the list, right, and every antique one, right, and it's $200 million or whatever it would be, Right, and he just order it, right, and he go to the central bank and say, print them the money. But no, it's the thought of getting something, say, that's worth $150,000, right, as a gift, because it's a bit stolen. And he's been photographed with so many different Petit Philippe's on, right, I guarantee some of them he's wearing were gifts from Oleg Deripaska, and they were stolen by the Pink Panthers. True story, right, I'm not making this up, right, it's not propaganda, right, you can go back on my art hostage um, blog, right, and it's in 2013, right, um, that, I, that the story's up there, stolen art, what you think is, can um, um, Pink Panthers, why is nothing recovered, and the name Oleg Deripaska, and the photograph is the Queen, the Queen K, he's yacht, and I wrote about it back in 2013, but this was 2008 and 2009, because there was a journalist, right, who wrote the, um, definitive article um, on the Pink Panthers. And I was helping him with this, right? And then Jan Glassy was a Swiss police officer investigating the Pink Panthers. And he was the one who discovered the Petit Philippe stolen watch because it had been sent to Switzerland. And then he was told to keep his mouth shut and, and he had to cover it all up because of the, um, you know, the connection with Oleg Deripaska and Lord Peter Mandelson and the big cover-up. Right, well, but they're all at it, right? And I'm sure the security services know about all that carry-on. You know what I mean? They've all got hooky gear. And I was just surprised that they, you know, they should have gone through his watch collection, Oleg Deripaska. Well, anyway, I just wanted to throw a little stolen art one in there, right? Just to um, to sort of blend it in, right? And because and, um, we're, we're going to see what's happening with the Kinnaham thing, right? And I imagine it's coming to a head now. I mean, they're having, you know, result after result. You know, the authorities, bang, you know, extradition, right. He's in Michael Carroll, right, the shooter on two attempted uh, murders, right, of in, in, during the Hutch-Kinahan feud, right. But they got him now. He's in jail, remanded, right. But there's another potential witness against um, the Kinahans. You know, maybe, um, you know, he'll have to wait until he gets um, convicted or whatever, if he does, and he gets 20 years or something like that, right? Or uh, a life imprisonment or something like that. Maybe he'll think again, or maybe he'll say, can I join the witness protection, right, and get a lower sentence for uh, for the shootings if he's prepared to testify against the Kinnahans. But you can imagine how many times, right, that's been offered. And, what's been, and now you've got the Americans involved. You know, I'm sure that if anyone has got very vital in, um, information and and they're prepared to testify against the Kinnahans, Daniel, Christopher and Christie, right, I'm sure the Americans would, right, would take them into witness protection in America, right? So they'd be right out of reach, gone, you know what I mean? Somewhere out in the boondocks, right, or somewhere like that. See, once the Americans get involved, it's a different ball game altogether and what off, what authorities can offer. See, you know, in Ireland and the UK and in Europe, right, they're very restricted in what they can offer, you know, and what they can make the deal with. But with the Americans, it's a completely different ball game. And if someone's got very important information and they're prepared to testify against the Kennehans in court, well, they get treated like royalty. 
you know, they'll say, okay, once you've testified, we'll take you out of the, uh, wherever it is, and, and you can go into the US Witness Protection Program. So, you know, it's all coming to a head, and, you know, every day something new's coming out. You know, and they're now connecting more and more companies, right? And Plastic Paddy, go over and see him on YouTube, right? He's got a nice one out now today, right, about this guy from Scandinavia, um, who was Thomas someone, Thomas Shea, and then Thomas some other Scandinavian name. I'm not going to try and say it, because you know me, I butcher names. Right, well, he's tracked it down, right? Al, you know, Plastic Paddy, he's tracked it down, right? Now, this guy, right, was um, he's wanted in, in um, Norway or Finland, right, over a $300 million fraud, right? And he's been living in Dubai, right? And he's connected to all the companies connected. So all of a sudden, the tentacles are spreading out. Now, obviously, the authorities know all about this, right? They've been working on this for years, right? And she said it as well, right? The other day, right, an Irish senator's come out saying... Um, um, saying that, you know, he hopes the paperwork's going to be put in soon, right? You know, how stupid is that? It went in weeks, months ago. And then you got the US ambassador to Ireland, Claire Cronin, right? She came out, right, in, an, in, in a podcast interview, right? And she said, um, you know, we've been working on the Kinnahans, right, for quite a few years now. You know, and, and you know, um, and, and the turn of events, you know, you've got to be ready for the next turn of events. So, you know, they're all, it's all, all of a sudden, right? It's, I think they're all reading off the script. But, you know, I don't think it's going to be very much longer, right, before it all comes to a crescendo. Right, I'm surprised, right, that we've had to wait uh, this long, right? But um, as I say, I think it's going to, when it comes out, what will happen Right, is it um is they'll be looking in the rear view mirror when they're telling us what happened. It won't be like this happened today or this happened yesterday, right? I think they'll say this happened last week or two weeks ago or something. Personally, well I mean I might be wrong. But anyway, we'll see how it turns out, right? What's this? Art hostage, episode seventy three, right? Um Daniel Kinnahan, right? The um downfall of the Kinnahan cartel. Oh, and Oleg Derry Pasca. Let's not forget old Oleg. Right, um, you know, he had a Diego Re Re Rivera, Diego Rivera painting, right, seized amongst the st other stuff that when they took from his Washington DC home. Right now, all, all I would say is, if they've got any petite Philippe watches, just run the numbers, right. And I'll tell you what, I guarantee, you, right, that they might come up as being stolen by the Pink Panthers. Right now, that's something that they should have done. Right, they probably ain't even thought about that. Right, well, maybe they should um, start to think about that, right, and run them numbers on them petite Philippe watches and the jewellery that they um, uh, that they might have recovered from um, raiding Oleg Deripaska's places in the United States and elsewhere as well. So anyway, art hostage, right, I'm signing off now, right, 28 minutes, right, it's, it's a sort of, um, that's what people keep saying to me, keep it under 30 minutes. Right, Art Hostage, Episode 73, Oleg Deripaska, Daniel Kinnahan, the saga continues, and we'll get back to it tomorrow, because it's Friday tomorrow, and who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, Friday. Okay, Art Hostage, signing off.